from Flight SimCon 2017, I am joined by Stephen Hood from Dovetail Games. Now, when you guys first took on the FSX, um, I guess it was the ESP for Microsoft, correct? That's when you guys actually first came on my radar. I'd never heard of Dovetail before, so I was very curious. So I did a lot of background sort of research, and I saw that you guys were kind of into train simulations and stuff like that. Today, you guys are really huge in the flight simulation community right now, and all eyes are on you to see what's going on with Flight Sim World, where it is today, and where it'll be from a year from now, assuming that within some time with somewhere within that time period, um, Flight Sim World will be re removed from the early access to the actual platform. But before we get into that, I'm actually really curious for a lot of people who may not know that are just learning about Dovetail. What is Dovetail Games? How long have you been around? How did you get started? What? So the the story is very similar for me because I didn't know much about Dovetail Games before they uh, they uh, started on FSX Steam Edition. Uh, I had been interested in making a flight sim for my previous employer for some time, and I was looking at the FSX platform, thinking maybe there's a great opportunity there. And Dovetail came out of nowhere, snapped that up, made the announcement, and I thought, there's my opportunity. It's gone. It's been taken from me before I even had that chance. And uh, the way it turned out is that I knew somebody that worked at Dovetail and um, they invited me to come to have a chat, asked if I'd ever wanted to work on a flight simulator. Of course I did. I became involved in it. But uh, Dovetail started as a rail simulator. Uh, they've had huge success with uh, their trains franchise. And it was a natural uh, plan for the business, if you like, to expand beyond that. So now they are... Well, they remain in trains, they're working on flight simulation, and they're also in the fishing category. So they've covered all those areas. And the story behind it is really that our CEO, Paul Jackson, he's interested in fishing, he loves aircraft, and he loves trains. So he's living the dream. The company is built around those three franchises at the moment, and uh, we're putting all of our effort and time into flight simulation right now to try and make that as strong as it can. We're in early access. The intention isn't staying that forever. It's just gathering the, the input and the take of the community, if you will, so that really we can work collectively to make a stronger uh, entrance into flight simulation in the coming months. Now, this might be an interesting question to ask, and it's more of a statistical question. Um, but like, as you just said, you're into train simulations and fishing simulations. How large is the community within Dovetail in, term, in terms of customers between the, the train simulation and the fishing games? Um, fishing is, has been the surprise, if you like. Uh, fishing has gone onto console, and that's been a fantastic opportunity for the company, and that's picked up a lot faster than we thought it would do. Uh, there's always doubts when you're entering into a new space as to how well something's going to do. Fishing has been amazing. Uh, trains continues to be hugely strong. I mean, the company's built around that. Their heritage is in trains. So really, the new space for us is flight simulation. Taking on the uh, uh, Microsoft uh, platform and then extending that with FSW was a gamble, if you like, for the business. And we have a committed team that we've been building up over the past two years because obviously we started with the flight school. Uh, that was really our entrance into understanding the technology. And then early access with Flight Sim World is where we're trying to put much of our efforts now. We've recently expanded into another small studio near the, the HQ, so there's a dedicated office for the flight sim team. And this is, this is serious business for us, you know, and we think we're going to be successful by trying to bring something new to flight simulation. How large is the team dedicated to Flight Sim World? How many so members? the core development team is made up of 16 people, 16 individuals, supported by the rest of the company, and there's, uh, there's over 100 employees in Dovetail now across three different sites. Uh, we work with loads of remote workers as well. So in the past where we've created lesson or mission content, we've worked with specialists around the world, predominantly in the U.S., um, so we call on those expertise and those experts, if you like, whenever we require them. And I would say the, the core development team for Flight Sim World is still quite small, but it enables us to pick and choose the right people to come on board as and when we find them. There are a lot of people that would love to jump into development for Flight Sim, but it's about being able to contribute a, a new skill so that we can expand at the right kind of rate to deliver the right kind of features and get the right kind of systems in place to um, stake our claim in this flight sim space. What are some of the biggest challenges that uh, Dovetail Games is facing with Flight Sim World at this stage? Uh, well, I, I think there are many. Uh, <laughs> winning the hearts and minds of the community is probably the big one. Okay. You know, you, you were saying earlier that you know, Dovetail come into the space, you hadn't really known about them previously, and I think there are still a lot of doubters as to what we're up to, why are we in this? Uh, are we going to bring anything new to this space? Are we just out there for a cash grab? 
we're not, we really care about this. This is something that the team absolutely love. We pick the right kind of people. We're passionate about what we do. Um, and I think our intention is to try and capitalize on the love we have for aviation and, and do something special. I think there's, the time has come to try and um, inject new blood into flight simulation. Uh, there's a lot of kind of competition out there that have been doing the same thing for a long time. We're here to have a look at what they're doing and uh, you know win the hearts and minds of the community and we'll do that bit by bit. A lot of people have been speaking about Dovetail Games and Flight Sim World in uh, recent weeks for obvious reason. Um, and some of the, the comments that come out there we're not too happy with, but we're trying to be professional, we keep our mouths closed, and really the only way we're going to win the hearts and minds is by delivering on something that people want to buy and enjoy. So we're committed to just getting on and spending all of our energy doing that. Of all the, say, negative critiques that you see out there, what is one that you might see most common that you're taking really seriously? Uh, I think the 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 myths around third-party support and the whole concept of selling on Steam and, you know, some people have suggested that we come into the space and we're going to ruin everything and, you know, flight simulation is built on the, the great third parties are out there. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. That's why we've been talking to a lot of them for months and months, probably a couple of years for some of the, the key guys. And uh, we, we've been taking our time because we are still a small team. We don't have the capability to just go to everybody and start working with them immediately. Understandably, they're running their own businesses as well. Flight Simulator World comes along. We ask them to do a number of new things, and it's a commitment on their part as well. Um, so we've been trying to, to uh, win those guys over in that space and slowly bring them into FSW so that they can be up and running and release their content into the space and we can expand Flight Sim World and, and compete with the competition that's out there. If we can get more experiences and more content into Flight Sim World, then I think we become a really uh, viable option to the, the, you know, the dedicated consumer that wants to fly a large jet, for example. We only have GAA aircraft in Flight Sim World at the moment. Our intention is to expand beyond that, but we need the right kind of partners. So we're spending a lot of our time in the background speaking to these people. Um, as and when we can, uh, and we need to continue to do that. We, we, can't, we can't win in flight simulation on our own, and it's not our intention to try and do this and, and create a new path without the support of the existing community. We want those guys on board. Um, everybody's a critic at the moment, um, but that's fine. I think the more time people spend with us in conversation, they'll understand that we aren't these evil people. We do really care about what we're trying to do, and there's an opportunity for all of us to... Um, expand flight simulation and, and create a new beginning, if you will. One of the things that I mentioned uh, back during 2015, I'm not sure if you were at the 2015 convention, but we had the developers panels that I, that I was a part of, and um, it was around that time, maybe just a few months prior, off the top of my head, was when Dovetail announced that you would be developing your own simulator. But we didn't know what it would be at the time or what it would be called or what features mm -hmm. what it would have. I think a lot of the, the common uh, thoughts were it's Microsoft Flight mm -hmm. and you're going to take out all the junk and turn that into a platform or is it going to be FSX? So a lot of people were really curious about what you were developing. Um, and at that same time, we so we had... X-Plane, which had not announced X-Plane 11 yet, um, and then of course prepared in its whatever incarnation that it was at the time, and I, I think maybe there's a, a, a common thought within the community that you have to pick one platform, and then you just stick with that, and that's all that you have, and one of the points that I made during that panel discussion was, you know, I think this is a time to start embracing multiple platforms. Um, of course, with that comes the expense of supporting multiple <laughs> platforms. Yep. Yep. Not that the platforms itself, that's just, you buy it, it's yours, and that's it. But I, I think it all comes down to third-party add-ons and the compatibilities of those add-ons between simulators. How is Dovetail approaching that situation where um, if someone buys something in Flight Sim World that they might be able to enjoy it? I mean, because naturally there are developers that are now starting to try and develop. Like, for example, we had Damien from Hi-Fi downstairs, uh, and one of the big things in his five-minute presentation was as people are asking him, are they looking into Flight Sim World? And mm -hmm. one of the things he's saying, he's looking to support all three platforms. Yep. But a lot of the kind of the out-of-the-box stuff that, have, that has always worked with, just say, your FSX Steam mm -hmm. Edition, is there what F at all is well, is, is the, Dovetail doing to maybe at least get those things working in the new platform? Th there's a lot of questions in there, so let me take it from yeah, the top. Was. So um, <laughs> uh, there's, there's a test of my memory now. Yeah. So my opinion is that 
uh, I agree with you in a sense that in order to get the most from flight simulation at the moment, you're uh, probably most likely to want to buy into all the simulations and invest in all of them uh, because they all offer something slightly different. My intention as a developer of Flight Sim World is to um, overshadow the competition with time so that there is a one-stop shop for flight simulation because I think that makes it clearer for everybody. Now, understandably, all the other developers are going to do exactly the same thing. Um, I, I don't personally want to have to own three different simulations in order to capture all angles of my flight sim experience. Uh, I think it has to be clearer for people, and that's really why you know, maybe some of the conversations around Dovetail coming to this space, uh, using the Steam channel uh, in order to supply content and the, the core product, we're doing that because it's ease of access. You know, I, when I came into this, I had so many conversations with people in the community who were tired of you know, downloading from a few random sites, trying to keep the sim running, having problems with it. These are all the reasons why we decided to make it 64-bit, focus on the underlying technology, deliver the service through Steam, just make everything easier. I want people to enjoy the flight simulation rather than the technical hurdles that are involved in trying to ha ensure that it runs and runs reliably. Right. Um, so I think we're in a space now where all the different sims offer something a little different. Uh, I want to make sure that Flight Sim World offers you everything that you want. I just can't do that overnight. Uh, even if I had 100 people to hand, we wouldn't want to do it overnight because we have right. to take our time to deliver this appropriately. Everybody wants something yesterday. Me too. I, w I wish we were much further down the line. But we'll get there. And there might be a few kind of um, moans and grumbles around the place to begin with. But slowly but surely, as we start to roll out our updates, and people will see them, Flight Sim World, we've already started to release you know, the first two updates for the project. The team are working on more. Then there will be some big headline features coming to the simulator that will change the landscape quite dramatically, I think. And we're going to deliver on those. Slowly but surely, I think we'll get much stronger, and people from all corners will see us as a viable option in the flight sim space. Correct. Now, you're naturally a member of the flight simulation development community. One question I always ask every developer that I ever interview is, are you a flight simulation enthusiast? And if so, what's your favorite add-on? <laughs> uh, my favorite add-on? I wouldn't say that there's a specific favorite add-on, aside from perhaps A2A's Cessna 172, and that's for very personal reasons that's involved in my flight training at the moment. So when I came into the space, I was, uh, I think a flight sim con last year, I did a presentation and I said I just started to learn to fly and I was very fearful of it. I've thrown myself into this. I've nearly concluded my, my private certificate now or my PPL in, in Europe. Uh, I've got to do my cross countries and get that signed off and then do my skills test or the check ride. Uh, so I enjoy A to A's attention to detail. That's what I love. And that's where my head is at in the flight sim world space at the moment. That's where we're operating. But we're intending to move beyond that and add more layers so that you can get you know, the large jet and the airliner experience eventually. I just don't want to throw it all in there. If you throw everything in there day one, I think all we'll end up doing is replicating uh, what people have had with FSX for a number of years. It might look a little more shiny. Right. And people love shiny, but it doesn't last very long. So right. we're, we're trying to do something different. Uh, so my add-ons are a, a big shout-out to Scott and the A2A team. And Scott's actually here. He's not exhibiting this year, but I did see him downstairs. Now, Stephen, you are the man, essentially, Thank you in very charge much. of... Yes. <laughs> uh, but Flight Sim World is your baby. It is, yeah. So who is Stephen Hood? Who is Stephen Hood? Stephen Hood is somebody that does not sleep at night. Uh, I don't sleep at night because there is so much to do in the flight sim space. I'm hugely passionate about what we're doing. This is my uh, biggest challenge in the industry to date, um, coming into the flight simulation space that was entirely new to me. I'd always wanted to make the flight simulator, and I'm trying to turn my uh, determination and creativity and desire for success into something that people will want to buy and enjoy. Um, it, there's a long way to go. There's a, there's a lot to do, and I'm sure many people think that uh, as a development team we can be quite aloof and detached from what's going on. Nothing could be further from the truth. I am always reading all the forums, I'm watching all the videos, I watch everything that's going on in order to understand what people are talking about. Um, sometimes I will engage in those conversations, um, but I care about this. It is a huge challenge, but I'm here to try and make it happen. Now, you definitely have the passion, which is obviously without question why Dovetail brought you on board to lead this project. Tell us about the technical background that led you here. 
uh, technical background of the project on my own. Uh, no, just out before Dovetail, before before you were brought in. Before I came to Dovetail, I was uh, in charge of the Formula One franchise uh, with a company called Codemasters. So I'd made r- Code racing Masters. games in the past. Yeah, Codemasters. I had a, I had a game back in. 2000, I think, or 99, called MTV Music Generator. I oh think yes, that was yes, Code wow, game. that's going I back. That game. Yes, yeah, yeah Codemasters <laughs> is still around, big company. Uh, they've done very well. There's there's a resurgence going on now with some of their projects, really good stuff. Uh, I know a lot of those guys. I was at Codemasters for a number of years doing the Formula One franchise. Tried to pick that franchise up that had been uh, stagnant for some time. I th- saw the potential in that. Uh, we made that a big success. I want to do the same thing with flight simulation. Going further back, I've been at lots of technology companies in uh, London, around the UK. Uh, s- reputable developers like Linehead, who are no longer around. I worked with Peter Molyneux for a while, and um, that crew, those were some, some fantastic years and times. Uh, I started at a company called Cygnosis, who did Wipeout. I remember um, that company. Yeah. I started with Cygnosis and I spent five years there. The lead designer of Wipeout, uh, a really good guy called Nick Burkham, gave me my break in the industry and I spent some time uh, there. Pretty much when PCs were uh, starting to be fitted out with all sorts of graphics cards at the time, the, right. the Voodoo. Voodoo. Voodoo, that's, <laughs> that's, that's right. when we were starting to make. It was all about the graphics and not the, uh, not the uh, exactly. entertainment experience at that time or the gameplay. It was all graphics, graphics. That. So we've been through all of that. So I've been around for 20 years doing this. Um, I'm 40 later this year and now I want to place my wisdom and determination into flight sim and I I, I don't know which way it's going to go at the moment. If I'm given all the time in the world then we'll make it a huge success but I have to win the hearts and minds of the community, the developers and the business at large at Dovetail in order to ensure that they are able to support this in the way that is necessary for us to be successful. And successful for me is making something that you want to turn to first and foremost. Um, You probably can't answer this question, Um, and if you can't, that's fine. What's the next big feature that you're planning for Flight Sim World? Because, it, because it, number one, people saw that rain effect, and I, I won't lie, I saw that and I was like, okay, <laughs> finally someone's done that. Um, what would you say would might, if you can, what might be that the next um, big feature that are, that's going to? We've we've got a roadmap internally at the moment that we're the development team are working to, and we're still quite flexible in the sense that uh, we segment the team. Uh, obviously they have different skills, we have artists, we have designers, technical designers, engineers, graphics engineers, and they're all working on a bunch of things that we want to release. At the moment, uh, we're working on some things that uh, are planned and others that people tinker on at the weekend. They come in and go, look what I've been doing. What, you spent your whole weekend just doing more work and messing around with this. The result is amazing. So that's not giving anything away, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of that, but I want to, how do I give it away, Mm -hmm. make the simulation a little more realistic uh, so it mirrors the kind of things that you do in the real world when you get into an aircraft. I want to uh, better replicate the environment in which you fly. So we've said, I think, repeatedly that we care greatly about the weather. You were talking about the rain effects. Rain effects are fantastic. Um, We spent some time on that. That's a, a tick in the box. You don't leave it there. You have to go a lot further with that. And I think you have to go a lot further with that because uh, we spent a great deal of time on the aircraft to try and make the core aircraft as good as they can be and and set a standard, and I'm expecting third parties to go beyond that. Uh, We haven't really touched the world, and we haven't really touched the environment and the sky and the the weather conditions. I want to get to that. I want to get to that, and I I want to make it uh, very different, and I want to leapfrog above what has gone before and that comes with its own technical challenges and we're trying to work through those at the moment. So there will be more updates in the project, there will be some cool new features that are coming out and then there will be some headline things that it's pretty obvious we're looking at weather. I haven't had much time to get my hands on Flight Sim World but I'm really looking forward to getting into it in the near future. Um, You've come out to Flight Sim Con again, this is your third year now Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it definitely shows a community that you are serious, you're here and you're making yourselves available which I think is a wonderful thing. You've got a wonderful setup up here so this is kind of a plug for my boys <laughs> you're running jetline systems computers how are, are you guys liking these they are lovely uh, th- when we arrived we were looking at these and looking at the performance and we were thinking i wonder if we can get any of these for the office how do i sign these off on expenses i'm not sure i'm going to be able to get away with that but i've got some ideas <laughs> yes terrific computers steven it's been great thank, thank you. you so much thank and you. we look forward to what you're going to be doing in the future thanks very much thank you